How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is topic 14.2 hybridization where we want to know what is an SP, SP2 and SP3 hybridization. Let's go. Okay, volume 11 where we need to know what is SP, SP2 and SP hybridization. We need to be able to explain it and then we look at the relationship between all things bonding using some molecules. The IB understandings is we need to understand what a hybrid orbital means and how it affects the uh, orbitals. We also need to be able to explain the formation of SP, SP2 and SP3 hybridization in methane, ethene and ethine. So carbon can form more compounds than any other, we know that. We know that carbon will share four electrons to have a complete octet, where it has eight electrons in the outer shell. Now the electron configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now if you look at that, you might be thinking, well how does that form four bonds? If I go through and do the orbital diagram, you'll see that carbon actually has some full orbitals. It has a full 2s and then an incomplete 2p. It's got one electron in the 2px and one electron in the 2py, but no electrons in the 2pz. Now, how does that form four bonds? It looks like it will only form three there. So what it, carbon does is it forms what is known as a hybrid. A hybrid where the energy of the s and the p become the same. So what it does is it promotes one of its electrons from the 2s orbital into that free 2pz orbital forming what we call an S and 3P hybrid. A hybrid orbital results from the mixing of different types of atomic orbitals of the same atom. So here we have an S and 3Ps all with the same energy, which means it is now a hybrid orbital known as an SP3. An SP3 hybridized orbital has the tetrahedral configuration. So anytime we have an sp3, that means the carbon's got four bonds and it will always have the tetrahedral configuration. All right, so we need to explain the formation of sp3 hybridization in methane. So we, we just talked about what a hybrid orbital is. It's the mixing of, a, of atomic orbitals within the same atom. So if I go to draw methane, which has the formula CH4, I can see that I've got my carbon with four bonds and each hydrogen provides one electron for each of those covalent bonds. So if I go through and put in the electron configuration of carbon in the black, we've got two electrons in the 1s, and then we have one electron in each of the s and then the 3p orbitals. And then what will happen here is because they've all got the same energy, they're a hybrid, the hydrogen can come along and form a covalent bond with each of the s and then each of the p orbitals. So its Lewis diagram has a carbon with two electrons being shared between each of the hydrogens. That means it's going to have four electron domains. Its molecular geometry is going to be a tetrahedral. And the type of bonds is it has four sigma bonds, four single covalent bonds, which we call sigma bonds. Okay, the formation of an sp2 hybrid orbital in ethene is slightly different. Ethene has a carbon to carbon double bond between two of the carbon atoms and there's triangular planar arrangement of those atoms around that carbon. Now this means we're starting to form a pi bond. So whenever we have a double bond, we've got the formation of a pi bond. So here are my two carbons with a double bond between the two carbons. I'm gonna do these in different colors so we can isolate the carbons, but there's our double bond between the two carbons. Here's our hydrogens that are connected to each of the carbons because ethane has a formula C2H4. Now I'm going to look at that first carbon in black. It's got two electrons in the 1s and then it's going to have one electron in a 2px orbital which is going to have higher energy because it is a pi bond. So the pi bond will actually have higher energy than the sigma bonds. Now this carbon will have one electron in that orbital and then the sigma bonds, it will have three bonds in the other three orbitals. So there's my electrons for the carbon in the black. The carbon in the blue provides one electron for the pi bond, the sideways overlapping. 
But to have a double bond, it also needs to have a sigma bond. So the end on end overlapping can be found in a 2s, that is a lower energy orbital. And then the hydrogens provide the other two bonds that are sigma bonds for this sp2 hybridization. It's known as sp2 hybridization because we have an s orbital and two p orbitals being hybridized, sp2. We don't consider the pi electron part of the hybridization. So it has three electron domains. The molecular geometry around the carbon atom would be triangular planar. And the type of bonds, well, it has a pi bond, a carbon to carbon double bond. So it has three sigma bonds and one pi bond. Remember to form the double bond, we have one sigma bond and one pi bond interaction between those two carbons. Okay, if we need to explain the sp hybrid in ethene, sp means we have a hybrid between an s and one p orbital. Ethene has a carbon to carbon triple bond, so it's going to have a linear arrangement around the carbon atoms. So if I go to draw in my ethene, I can see that I have my two carbons with the triple bond and then the hydrogen at each end of the molecule. And what happens here is our hybrid that forms has now got two pi electrons. So we've got a px and a py that have higher energy than the hybridized orbital because the pi electrons contain more energy than those sigma bonds. So this carbon will have two electrons in the 2px and the 2py, and it will have two electrons in one in the 2s and one in the 2pz. That forms our hybrid, a 2s and a 2p. The carbon in the blue will come along and share three electrons, two electrons in the pi bonds and one in the sigma bond, and then the other hydrogen will share with the 2pz. So what we have here is a carbon that has two pi bonds because we've got the sideways overlapping like this and then we've got the front and back overlapping as well. So it's got two electron domains, it's linear and this type of arrangement has two pi bonds and two sigma bonds. Okay, the last thing you'll be asked to do is identify and explain the relationship between the structures and the hybridization. So generally speaking, if there are four electron domains, then the hybridization is sp3. So here we have four bonds, so that's an sp3 hybrid. This carbon has four bonds, that's an sp3 hybrid. Now this nitrogen only has three bonds, but remember it's got a lone pair of electrons, so that is sp3 hybridized as well. A carbon with three bonds will only be sp2 hybridized. So if it's got three bonds and it's a carbon, it'll be sp2. The oxygen, well the oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons, so it's got three bonds or three, re three electron domains, so it's sp2. A carbon with a triple bond will be sp, and a carbon with four bonds will be sp3. The oxygen with two single bonds and two lone pairs, that will be sp3 as well. So generally speaking, if there are three electron domains, the hybridization will be sp2. If there are two electron domains, the hybridization will be sp, and if there are four electron domains, the hybridization will be sp3. Remember not to forget the non-bonding electrons when you're recognizing the hybridization, because they take up an orbital. All right, volume 11, some top tips. Make sure you can describe the bonding of pi and sigma bonds end on end, sideways overlap, and then remember the electron domains when you're discussing non-bonding and hybridization. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.